Action Program. Gracious and loving God, we know that it is by your hand that our parish has been guided to create a faithful and supportive community. As we welcome all members to help build up your kingdom within our parish, we ask that you guide us to be the faithful stewards of the gifts you have entrusted to us by generously giving to the continued growth of our parish community. In doing so, we model the words of Mother Teresa, who reminds us to reach out to others in love and compassion, giving where it is most needed, and share the joy of loving with everyone. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our entrance hymn found at number 521, The Eyes and Hands of Christ, number 521. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Jesus Christ. 
Let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, O Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior he is, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the fall of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. The one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh who live according to the flesh. For if we live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everyone. My name is Father Jeff Rod. I've met many of you uh, over the past couple of Saturday evenings introducing myself and the back of the church, and I'm your new parish priest, and it's good to be with you, good to serve uh, with Father Brandt, and uh, good, to, good to be a part of uh, St. Teresa of Calcutta. So once again, I look forward to being your parish priest. If there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. I grew up in New York, Syracuse, New York area, moved to Collegeville when I was 16, so I'm locally from the from the area, I went to Perkiomen Valley uh, before going off to College of Bloomsburg and working as an accountant before uh, becoming a priest. I've been a priest since 2009, and once again, I'm, I'm very happy and excited to be here, uh, be here with you. I do let the cat out of the bag real quick. I am a Mets fan, so I apologize for that. I'll root for the, I'll root for the Eagles. I'll root for the Sixers. I'll. I'll root for, if I care, you know, hockey, Flyers, you know, St. Joe's, Villanova, but never the Phillies. So, uh, but I can, but, but I, I am a, a big sports fan. Uh, when, I, when you are a big sports fan, you tend to use analogies uh, that 
speaking from the side of sports because sports oftentimes is a microcosm of life. For those of you that follow it, there's a lot of drama. And, there's, and on Sports Talk Radio, it's more about following drama these days than it is actually about really reporting what has gone on in a game. And, for, and the NBA would be like my, my, basketball would be my third or fourth sport that I would follow, but I do enjoy following basketball to a degree. And the drama within basketball is a bit different than the drama in other sports for those that follow basketball. Uh, there's two things that I don't know that I have ever seen before that have gone on in the off season of basketball this year. And once again, I'll use sports analogies at times to explain a point. Uh, James Harden for the Sixers uh, surprisingly said I'm going to opt into my final year of my contract and take 35, 38 million dollars, whatever that number is. And he said, oh, and by the way, I'm not playing for the Sixers. So I'm going to opt into my year where the Sixers owe me 35, 40 million dollars, but I'm going to make them trade me because the people I want to play for need to trade for me and because of salary cap restrictions. So he's being very, we'll say, rigid on his approach. And then there's a player for the Portland Trail Blazers named Damian Lillard that said, you're going to be trading me to the Miami Heat. And normally these things would be done a little bit more discreetly, but in our modern world, we tend to express and demand. And in sports, you see it a lot, this demanding side. And on many different levels. And once again, looking at the NBA season, you, you tend to see where the, the players they just have this demanding nature to it. And that, of course, is not just in the NBA, but it's also in our world. It's in our culture. We can look at social media and see people demanding attention. We're in a world where people are struggling with identity, with meaning, with purpose. And so we're using different platforms in order to demand attention, demand for me to be noticed, demand for me to get some personal desires achieved. And it's, once again, it's a struggle for every one of us, to a degree. And the challenge of our readings that we had heard today was to learn how to be flexible Christians. And what I mean by that is not that we can do whatever we want, but flexible in the sense of being disposed to what the Lord may want of us. And that's really hard. In our Americanized spirituality, we tend to use the checkmark approach. I pray, I pay, and I obey. And we tend to have that approach to our spirituality, and it's a very institutional approach. And those are all good things. We need to pray. We need to be generous, but we're also called to listen with a loving heart, to allow, once again, the spiritual life to flex us a little bit, maybe to take us in a direction where we don't want to go or we don't expect to go. Jesus had said in the Gospels today, learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart and you will find rest for your souls. Once again, we tend to be on an institutional track with our faith. But the Lord, ultimately, he wants our heart. And he wants, maybe even more so, to unite his heart to us. And so once again, in the readings we had heard today, according to the theologian, Father Lagrange, I would like to share with you what he said. Our Lord is pleased to sum up 
in these two words, humility of heart and meekness, which is the whole of Christian life and the whole of perfection. There is a very profound reason for this. Humility is the root of all Christian virtues, and meekness is its flower. Once again, humility has that focus where I am able to look at my life and say, I'm not thinking less of myself, not woe is me, but maybe focused less on myself. And meekness is when a person is willing to accept and submit without resistance to the will and the desire of someone else. And that's where that spiritual flexibility has to come in. How do I submit to the desire of God? And we know that the face of the church is going to change in the next 20, 30 years, the way it appears, in terms of we're going from a world that was really geared on an institutional track of a relationship with God. But now, in order for us to sustain our faith, it's going to have to be more personal. We're going to have to recognize, like in the early church, that Jesus came to offer friendship, love, and forgiveness. And we have to take advantage of that, especially through the sacrament of confession, and especially with receiving Holy Communion in a very profound manner, and letting that be our nourishment. Remember, receiving the Eucharist is the most profound thing that we can do. It's in a way, very deep way, and I'm going to say something here that might be a little more star startling. The Eucharist is more important than even the Scriptures. The Scripture is the Word of God. But the Eucharist is God himself. And so chew on that for a little while. Every time we're receiving Holy Communion, we're being united to God himself. The word of God was meant to lead us to the person of God. And the person of God we receive in Holy Communion every time we come forward receiving Jesus Christ. So once again, this attitude of our faith has to become something that becomes flexible. So that way we can receive God's love, God's peace. We can surrender it to him. And when that happens, as Jesus talked about in this gospel, we will become meek and humble of heart. We will have an interior peace that nothing in this world can, dis can disrupt if we allow the Lord of Lords to be the Lord of our life. It's a challenge. It's not something that happens overnight. But it's something where we need to allow flexibility to enter. We need to allow the mysteries that we encounter in the spiritual life to take root in our hearts. So once again, Jesus Christ came to offer each and every one of us that peace. And don't let our lives become so rigid from sin, from the need for attention to have desires met. Don't let those dictate your life. Let the peace of the Lord come into your hearts especially through his Holy Communion, especially through the Eucharist. And may our hearts be flexible to be used by God in an unbelieving world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in our loving Father, we bring to him our needs and petitions. For the church, may God help us in being witnesses for Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who lead governments and communities, May the Lord grant them wisdom in serving their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who handle addiction and substance abuse, may the Holy Spirit grant them strength and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the love of Jesus inspire us in taking up his yoke. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Anthony Oliveri, that they may be welcomed by the angels into heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, kindly look with favor upon the needs of your children. Brought to you in the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. The second collection is for our parish mortgage contribution program. Please join in singing number four, six, five. Come to me, number 465. Thank you very much.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty words, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end. We acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. I need his blood. I need his blood. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of all the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 355, Bread of Life, number 355.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A few announcements. Adoration volunteers are needed on Wednesdays in the chapel. Please see the bulletin. Next weekend, we will welcome Father Moroda for a missionary appeal. Information about his appeal is in the bulletin today. Tuition care forms are placed in the box in the narthex today. A flyer is in the bulletin, and additional forms are in the nar narthex. The Knights of Columbus are collecting children's school supplies for local families. All supplies can be put in a bin in the chapel vestibule before August 20th. Open gym for adult basketball games are held on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Please see the bulletin for details. Sacred Heart Parish in Royersford will be holding their annual fair beginning Wednesday, July 12th through the 15th. Information is in our bulletin. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing number 685, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, number 685. 